the formidable robot. Hello, my name is Susan. I have been working at a job as a journalist for almost five years as a part of a team that try to archive strange occurrences or absurd pieces of media, like broadcasts such as the Bud Dwyer incident, recordings of airings that had the emergency alert system interrupting regular scheduling, and disturbing news reports. Plus, my team tries help try to investigate reports behind missing and exploited children. On the archive side of the investigation job, we have all of the tapes and discs backed up in a vault somewhere, so anybody who tries to intrude the building would be able to get through the vault. My job as a journalist is pretty hard work, since I have to interview the people who have come across any of the suspicious activities, and I have to watch some of the archives so I can write down what occurred in the archives I am currently viewing. I mostly specialize journaling about what goes on in strange tapes or DVDs people find. Now enough of my backstory and on to discussing what happened during one of my first investigations. It was around September of 2017, where I got a call from my boss saying that a group of teenagers went missing, and the only clue of their whereabouts is this disc that they found. I immediately went down to the area I worked at, and I saw my boss at his desk. And sitting across my boss's desk was an Asian girl, who seemed to look like she was between 9th and 11th grade. She had hazel eyes, black hair that was in a bun in which the hair clip was shaped like a butterfly, and she was seen wearing a blue shirt with a purple butterfly painted on, black shorts, green leggings, and she wore white sneakers. I was asked by my boss to take her into a special room, so I can ask the girl about the disc and how she came across it, which I did so. As soon as I took the girl to the investigation room, I offered her a beverage since she seemed pretty worried and frantic when she entered our station, to which she accepted. I then sat her down and asked her about the disc and how she found it, to which she responded with that her and her four friends were taking a walk around the city in their area, and that they were going to take a shortcut to one of their friends' houses. They walked into one of the alleyways in the city, until they came across the disc with a case that had white paper as the cover of said case. Written on it with marker was barely readable gibberish that said, Little shot as for DVD, with crude stick figures that were of animals I can barely make out. I immediately assumed it was that animated 90s show, Little Shop, which was based off the famous horror movie, Little Shop of Horrors, but I was wrong. When I turned around the case, it contained an episode list. The episodes that were on the DVD go by the name, Steamed, Guild Tripping, The Tortoise and the Air, Two Peas in a Podcast, Goat Figure, Pet Napped, Littlest Pet Shop of Horrors, Paint a Picture It Will Last Longer, and Parts 1 and 2 of Littlest Pet Street. When I realized that this was a Littlest Pet Shop DVD, I asked the girl if she and her friends watched it, and she nodded her head. When she confirmed that she did watch the contents of the disc, I asked her to explain it to me. She explained that the content on the disc obtained all of the episodes I have mentioned however, each episode had very poor looking quality, and the audio sounded heavily distorted with it occasionally cutting out, along with the screen cutting to black every few seconds. She said that she saw some really messed up imagery when she and her friends watched it. She also stated that after her friends watched the disc, she haven't seen them at school since. I asked if she could elaborate on the content of the disc, but she began to get choked up before she could even describe what she saw. I assumed that it was either too disturbing or because she missed her friends. I also asked if I could see what her friends looked like to file a report, just in case they have gone missing, to which the girl agreed and showed me a group picture on her phone. The friends in the group picture that accompanied the Asian girl, were two white females and an African American male. The white female on the Asian girl's left had brown hair, brown eyes, in which her hair was tied in a braid with a pink colored scrunchie, and she was seen wearing a red short-sleeved shirt, a pink skirt, white leggings, and blue dress shoes. The other white female on the Asian girl's right had orange hair, blue eyes, and was seen wearing a purple short-sleeved shirt, with blue pants, and black sneakers. The African-American male has short brown hair, brown eyes, and was seen wearing a green t-shirt, brown corduroys, and white sneakers. 
The girl stated that this picture was taken the day they found the disc and watched it, and asked me and a few of my associates to view the contents of the disc. I agreed, and said that if she has any updates on her friends to come back to us, and give us an update so we can further our investigation. After the girl left with her aunt, me and my associates decided to insert the disc into the disc slot that was plugged into my computer. As the disc booted up, it began to start with a main menu, with the only options being, play, or, episode select. I decided to select a random episode, and that being the tortoise and the air, and the Asian girl was right. You could barely make out what the characters were saying, and you can't even make out what was going on in the picture, since it cut to black mostly. So I caught myself skipping episodes, until I made it to the episode, paint a picture it will last longer, on the episode selection screen, since all of the episodes were nothing but a glitched up mess. When I selected it, the episode immediately played. The first half of the episode started off as a normal episode of Littlest Pet Shop. I should know since I watched it with my niece a couple of times when she was younger. The only thing that seemed strange was that the audio was still distorted, and the video quality looked like something from an old VHS tape that collected dust from sitting on a shelf for almost a decade. Other than that, things seemed to be normal, until the Biscuit Twins confront Blythe on the painting bank I made after Josh showed it to the entire school, which was when things felt a lot different compared to how I remembered the original episode, since this was one of the newer episodes I remembered watching with my niece. The audio quality became a bit better, and you can understand what the characters were saying, but it still sounded muffled and hard to make out. The picture quality also got a bit better too, as the new scene was about to occur. When it cut to the next scene, it didn't start like how I remembered the original episode. It was instead a new scene with Minka, but she was in the middle of the day camp in a fetal position, with a paintbrush on the floor next to her, and paint splatters were all over the floor and on the walls. The other pets were nowhere to be seen in the day camp with Minka for some unexplained reason. Minka was mumbling to herself, but since the audio quality was very poor, you could barely make it out. But what I could make out was the music in the episode. The music was of a broken church organ, and the melody was the same five keys playing over and over again at a fast tempo. After 30 seconds of seeing Minka like this, it then cuts to the Biscuit Twins and Blythe having their usual conversation, but as soon as they enter the day camp, they see Minka on the floor in a fetal position. They then look up at the paintings that Minka made that she plastered on the walls, which looked very different than I originally remembered. Instead of the paintings being diverse and based on a situation going on while Minka was painting like in the original episode, it was the same painting of Blythe and the pets, but something seemed off as the episode focused on them. As it zoomed in on the center painting, the sound quality began to grow worse and worse, until the center painting engulfed the entire screen. Then it focused on the painting of Blythe and the pets stare emotionlessly at the viewer, but then the painting changed ever so slightly after 30 seconds. After 30 seconds of the painting being focused on, me and the people watching the episode noticed that Blythe and the pets were starting to ooze black paint out of their eyes, just like when a woman cries and you can see the mascara dripping down her face. What's even more unsettling is as more black paint oozes out of Blythe and the pets' eyes, the more they began to blink. What's even more creepy is that their pupils began to follow the cursor as I began to move it. After focusing on that disturbing drawing for a minute or two, it then cuts back to the Biscuit Twins, who were the only people in the currently dimly lit and desolated day camp, and they looked scared out of their wits, looking at all of these paintings that Minka made in the day camp. They were surrounded by the same painting of the same person, and of the same pets watching them. Watching their every move, the Biscuit Twins tried to escape by opening the door, but to no success. They were stuck in the same room as these deranged portraits, and as they realized that, the two twins start to huddle in fear and started shaking immensely, as it then cuts back to the painting of Blythe and the pets with them still blinking as their pupils follow my cursor. However, something was different about the painting. We noticed that Blythe and the other pets started to smile, and their grins expanded the more the episode focuses on it, until their grins were from ear to ear. After another 30 seconds of focusing on the painting, it then focused on the walls that had the paintings on it, do something that honestly freaked me and my associates out. 
The wall then began to morph all of the paintings into one giant painting. Then Blythe and the other pets began to come to life by crawling out of the painting and near the biscuit twins with the same deranged expression on their face, which caused the biscuits to try to run, but Blythe ended up grabbing the twins by their ankles as the instrumental of the Guilty Tango song plays. However, the instrumental was half an octave lower, as you hear the two twins scream which was the loudest sound in the episode. After the twins get dragged into the painting by Blythe and the pets, it then cuts to black, but it then showed one final image that was the worst image of the entire episode. The image was still of Blythe and the pets staring at the viewer, but they had a different facial expression. Instead of them staring emotionlessly at the viewer, they were staring down at the Biscuit Twins and their facial expressions were filled with anger, disdain and malice, as the Biscuit Twins stare at the viewer with tears in their eyes as they were in fear of facing their fates of being forever stuck in a painting. Never to be heard from again. What's even more disturbing was that as the instrumental of the Guilty Tango grew softer, there was a sound that grew louder and louder as it focused more on the painting. The sounds were of women screaming in agony, pain and distress. The screaming grew louder and louder as it focused on the painting, until it finally turned to static. After I saw that episode, I began to feel pretty unsettled by how creepy that painting was and how unsettling that ending was. But I immediately shook it off, since someone must have tampered with the episode heavily since it did look fan-made. But the way they edited that painting felt way too real to be a fan-made project. Whoever made that did a pretty good job with the editing. However, I had to view the rest of the episodes without the glitches, and see if there is anything off with the other ones. Either the person who made the episode must have edited it to glitch out like that on purpose or the disc might have been heavily scratched. Just to be sure it didn't have any scratches, I decided to go to the disc repair machine so I can buff out the scratches on the disc, and that helped out a little bit so I can see the episodes much clearer. The other episodes were still normal, except for one thing. In the episodes, Two Peas in a Podcast, Goat Figure, Steamed, and all of the other episodes that had the Biscuit Twins in them on this DVD, the Biscuit Twins were noticeably absent in said episodes. Whenever a scene where Blythe or anyone would interact with the Biscuit Twins, the scene would still play out as normal, but the Biscuit Twins would be absent. So it would look like Blythe was talking to herself in some instances. A couple of weeks later, me and my associates called up the girl's aunt, and asked her to bring her to our station since I caught her aunt's license plate number, and a fellow associate of mine used said license plate number to trace her address so we can give her a phone call. To which her aunt didn't agree to, and instead told me to come to her house or at her workplace, since she said her niece had school, which I agreed to. During the aunt's work break, I decided to sit with her at a table with a cup of coffee, and I had her give me some info on how her niece was doing after she washed and found the disc. The aunt told me that from what her niece told her, that two of her friends that washed the disc with her haven't showed up at school since. I told her that I will have my friends and associates figure out where her friends are after we finish our coffee. I decided to ask the girl's aunt about the names of the girl's friends, and jotted them down on a notepad. After the girl's aunt and I finished our cup of coffee, I decided to head back to my job, so I can find the homes of the two missing teenagers and ask their parents. I first went to the house of the brown-haired girl, and I asked her father about what happened to her and if she is okay. The father shook his head and said that she was in the mental hospital, due to the contents of the disc that she saw. But he didn't know about the other girl with orange hair, so we investigated by going to her mom's house. I asked her the same questions, but the girl's mom said that she hadn't seen her. It might be most likely that she ended up missing. I told her that we can help find her, but deep down, I knew that the investigation might not end well, and I was right because I had yet to find the orange-haired girl's location until recently, which was why I am sharing my story now. I found words on the street that the girl who we were looking for a few years ago had died, but the most disturbing part was how she died. The girl's parents called up another group of detectives, ones that one of my associates worked with for a while, and they told him that they did find the girl in the woods, but she was not found alive. She was hanging from a tree like a piñata, and her body had bruises and cuts all over her. 
From what my associate described, it sounded like someone must have eaten her before or after she was hung. But the most disturbing part was that the girl's stomach was cut open, presumably after she was hung. It has been a few months since the school broke the news to the class that the girl turned out missing. Which means that her body had time to decompose, since the area she was found at was a very secluded area, and nobody even bothered to check on her. I was beyond disgusted from what was described to me by my associate. I wish that we found the girl sooner, because maybe we could have saved her. But I knew it was too late. I don't know how I should end this article. But all I can say about this, is if you ever find a mysterious DVD or VHS, or something very sketchy and shady online, you know who to call. Feel free to contact me by email immediately if the Department of Investigation is closed or if they are busy. I can try to help you find out who has been behind the contents of the tape or disc, even though I have yet to find out who made this bootlegged Littlest Pet Shop episode, but I am still trying to crack this case to this day. If I find anything, I will keep you guys up to date once I find who the culprit is and get him to answer my questions. Now if you excuse me, I have an unfinished case I need to crack.